Hey, hi everybody, this is Ginger Cook, and today I'm excited to bring us a really different type of landscape. I thought this is almost, it's its uh, sort of impressionistic, a little bit abstract, and yet in the distance we've got some great atmospheric perspective with the, with the sky and these mountains and this fun tree. And we're going to try something new today. This was done originally on a Paramount canvas, they're real canvas sheets by Paramount, and Jerry sells them, very inexpensive. But when you can catch these on sale at Jerry's Artorama, they're under three bucks for ten sheets. All right, and, and you know, there's the tablets. But they also make, and I've never tried it, but we bought some just to try it. They also make something called, this is on real uh, hardboard, this is called Protones All Media Tone Painting Panel, and it's acid-free archival quality, and it's actually on masonite, or like on wood, not on cardboard, which is a big difference, okay? And so that, I mean, they're very nice, and we, this came in sort of this neutral um, kind of brown color, which I thought was kind of perfect for what we were doing, and we did sand it. It was a little rough, so we did sand it. So that's what I'm going to be painting today, and i um, going to figure out to show you that. Well, we'll just try it. We, we don't, you know, I've already done it on this, and we'll see. And the, thing, the other thing we're going to be using today is... Uh, Something called buff titanium, you know, buff ti titanium buff. Um, that's by Golden. Golden calls it unbleached titanium, and we're also going to be using a golden uh, fluid acrylics to see if uh, we could get some nice thin lines and a Posca pen. Okay, and uh, the Posca pens. Are, what are nice about those is they're 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 totally permanent. They don't come off, but for about five minutes you can remove them. Where a lot of the other permanent pens I've tried, well, you can't, you know, once you put a mark on there, you better just paint over it. You're never getting it off, okay? So there's my original painting that I'm going to show you how to do. We're on a little 6x8 panel, so it should be fairly quick to do it. Um, we'll, you know, talk a little bit along the way uh, about, um, you know, stuff. And now, you know, one of the things I can tell you when we're getting ready to put our paint out, you can see what I've got here, it's, um, is that... As things for your landscape, when things go back in the distance, the farther they are away from you, they kind of gray out. And you, you just next time you're in your car, just kind of look down the road and notice what happens to the colors as they get farther away from you. All right, just check that out and see because I think sometimes you know you you kind of know it, but you haven't really thought about it. Does that make sense? We're also going to be using a transparent white or a zinc white. Okay. And that would be the other thing I would want to be using. Get my little cap back on here. Um, let's see, we got a little Dazzling Purple. That's a great color to have. This is Cad Red Medium. We're also going to be using Cad Yellow Medium and Yellow Oxide. Okay. Then, of course, white and then the um, off white. So here's our buff titanium, which I'll sort of put in the middle next to my white. I'll put that. Um, there and uh, let's see a little yellow oxide so this will be kind of fun I think we're gonna have fun with this it's something a little different and I th think that it has a um, uh, so some real value in learning how to create a landscape with this distance and do all these fine fine funny little twiggy things which um, part of it is the fact that I have a really good brand new ruby satin silver angle brush and that makes it that's what I did with those and that's how much easier it is a lot of times if you have not seen my video can your brush do this I would highly recommend you watch it because what um here's a little of our zinc white here golden don't need too much by the end of the tube on that okay and uh, you know see so you know see it's um, what, because you're, if a lot of times you think it's you and it's your brush, and then just upgrading your brush can make a big difference. So let's, I'm going to put this out of the way somewhere. I guess I'll put it where I can see it, and uh, and I'm going to turn this over, the paper over, place this right here on like that. And one of the things I want to do is sort of just take a, you know, sort of start and just kind of this is halfway, and this is halfway. Okay. And I'm just going to come here and just do a line like that. And then I'm going to say, here's some mountains. Okay. This nothing has to be too accurate. 
we're going to come in here like that and do something like this. Kind of divide this space up, in other words, all right? So that's how I'm going to say this is sky. That's some purple mountains. Here's another little row of um, almost just down here, about a couple fingers here. We're going to divide this up again, something like that. Okay, that, that's all. Just, just a few little marks on the canvas so I can see what I want to paint. Now, I'm going to start with a... Um, half inch ruby satin silver angle brush and I think I want a little buff titanium I want to just come on up here like this and it does paint over nicely that's nice a uh, little buff titanium I'm just kind of come in here and do that like that and I think I'll cover the whole sky with that color and because I want to do this wet on wet and uh, to put my sky in I want a little bit now if I take a tiny bit of phthalo blue all right, like that, and a tiny bit of cad red medium with it. I'm going to kind of gray that out, okay, so it's not so bright. I can come in here just using some streaks and create kind of a streaky sky, which is, I don't want this too bright, but just want to say there's my sky here, just sort of streaking along. Now, if I want it a little bit darker, I can always make it darker, just add a little more color, okay? So let's see, let's see, there's a little bit more. Everything on this painting is kind of at an angle, which I liked. I thought it was sort of neat. I was inspired by this photo I saw somewhere. thought I'd paint it. Okay, now, the next thing I want to paint is the, um, uh, I, I want a lot of this to be in the purple colors. Okay, all of this will be pretty much in the deep dark purples until I do something else. And it might as well start with that. So a little bit of uh, Dosnine purple tiny bit of cad red medium and I'm just going to come along here like that and cover this with these colors if that's pretty easy right and I'm going to stay away from this edge here and, and, and I, I would have to tell you that I think it paints pretty nicely it you know it's a little bit nice I think they're a little more money obviously than the little canvas sheets but if you were doing a small painting um, I would uh, certainly something to consider might want to consider it as that's something you might want to do. So we're doing those. Um, now I'm going to just here like that. Now when I get up to here though, I'm going to use the angle brush and my trees are growing straight up. There's sort of a gravity thing here. I'm going to suggest that the trees are kind of growing up this way, maybe up a little higher into our, our mountains like that. And uh, just cover that up like that right so that's there's our okay like there you go and then here's some mountains right there okay so that worked pretty well and let's see let's keep going I'll just do another little layer of this maybe leave a little space where this is going to be put another little layer of purple this is just sort of I like to start with my darks first and uh, work my way up if you're not doing that with acrylics and you're farthest thing away yeah, the, the, what's come to mind recently, and I think that's one of the questions I want to uh, mention to you, is that um, you know what do you like to watch when you're watching a video on YouTube? When you go to my Acrylic Academy, some of our videos are four and five hours long, some are an hour, but they're really in-depth uh, instruction. When we do our live shows, John and I just have a good time. We may take an hour and a half or two hours to paint something, but we answer a lot of questions from the audience. When we pre-record a show like this, what's happened is you're either out of town on vacation or just this is a lesson we would like to have up on, on um, YouTube, but for whatever reason we can't do a live show. So we have some, probably what I would say, in the vault. Does that make sense? And I want to just bring this up a little higher here too, like that. There we go, like that, something like that. There's our, there's our next little group of mountains. Now I want, I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, and some of this um, uh, buff titanium. You know, so I haven't put even put any white out yet, right? And I'm going to come here like that and suggest that these mountains are grayer and um, lighter because they're in the background. Okay, like that. We'll just kind of fit those in there like that. Maybe bring this up just to here. Okay, if I do that, then I got to bring this up a little higher, which we can do. Okay, so let me just fix the shape on that. I don't want to clone anything. 
with cloning is when you make the same shape over and over and over again. You don't want to do that. All right, so we're saying that those are our darker mountains, our rather trees. So these are going to be trees, and we'll put a little bit more dark purple on them like that. There we go. There. Okay, so now that we've done all this, we haven't dried anything. It's all very happy and good. All right, and you can see it's pretty straightforward. And um, you know, not nothing too, nothing too scary. Pretty straightforward as far as what we're doing. Um, and then one point you ask yourself, well, when do you have to dry something? Well, when you you have to dry things, when you know purple pretty much is going to mess the color up on about anything else you do. We could possibly make a green color using phthalo blue and um, yellow. Here's a pretty you know dark green color. Now I can put that here and tap that onto my uh, purple like that and it because the purple won't change it it will still be a dark green color and, and it's technically I mean how much of this would you see really I don't know but I could do that and then I can take some yellow and um, I could tap some little yellow flowers on here and because the yellows, now this is interesting, the yellows on the corner of my brush is hitting the wet green. So it's making sort of an interesting looking plant, isn't it? Because the, the, because the green's still wet, okay? So I'm gonna, maybe I've got something over here too. We're just going to put some little tree over here like that. Just put it over there. And then, you know, this is kind of abstract, kind of very, very simple landscape, okay? I could do that like that, put that up there. Um, but at this point now I would feel I would need to dry it. So that's what we're going to do now. And before I dry it, uh, I want to just invite you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't. And um, look forward to um, uh, seeing more people comment on our videos. And particularly when we're traveling, if you like what we've do done something, please take a moment to comment. Tell us what you like about it, what you'd like to learn to paint. Okay, now well that's we drive that. Now I want to do something with a little atmospheric perspective. So we're going to take a little bit of this zinc white right here and um, just tap some of it off on the paper. And a little soft brush here. This is a very soft old brush. We're going to suggest that there is some mist coming up out of these mountains here, like that. Ooh, cool, huh? And let's do some, this is kind of dry, right? Don't, not too much, right? Well, I want some here, too. So we're going to just come up here like this. And maybe another little layer of, of mist. Make sure that, you know, don't get near that yellow if it's not dry. You'll be sorry. All right. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Just, you know, how sometimes there's like this, almost like a fog bank in um, that happens. I want to come along here like this and uh, suggest that maybe it's here too. And then I'm going to come over here and make another one right here. This is my third one. And this is all with mixing white and because it's transparent, this is called zinc white, because it's transparent you're going to see the purple through it. If you use white you just blot it out. So that's how we're going to do this. And let's bring this all the way up here like that. Okay, all right, so those are our, sort of our layers of this um, that we're doing. Now that brush goes in water. We'll bring back our small little angle brush. And now I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow and um, the little blue, make this brighter green, okay? A little tiny bit of our buff titanium. Okay, that's kind of a, let's put a little bit more yellow with that. Little drop of the cad red medium, kind of tone it down. Let's um, 
Gonna, that's a little bright, so let's try a little yellow oxide in that. Okay, let's get a little bit more yellow oxide in that. There we go. That just needed to tone that down just some, right? And we're gonna say that there's our some sort of little green green plant bushes here. Okay, and then as we move further down, and we we'll take a little yellow oxide. You know the color that would look really smashing would be magenta, because I can do some great things with magenta. And that's quadrichrome magenta. It's kind of an artificially made color, but we can do that. Um, here we go. Let's put a little of that right there, just um, as we go, because I like that mixed with uh, yellow oxide. It makes sort of an interesting um, kind of a reddish gold brown color. And I want to say that I want to come up here like this, and I want it a little bit greener, but it will just kind of, there we go. I say that this is in here like that, got some sort of a plant. And I probably, if I did this painting three or four times, I would do it differently, probably slightly every time. So don't worry about getting exactly like mine. You're just getting the idea of how to do this. So here's some uh, yellow and uh, buff titanium and um, some magenta. And here's my next layer of plants that I'm going to put in here like this. And uh, kind of, I know I'm going to kind of cross over that line. And if you don't mix the colors very well and you don't risk your brush that much, you'll get these sort of two tone color effects on here that are really way cool. Um, to make sure you have enough paint, a little bit of yellow oxide. And it's almost a peach, it's a sort of a rose peach color, not quite pink. And we're just saying that there's this group of plants that are doing that. We're just using the corner. I find myself using the corner a lot when I'm painting. I think, you know, of an angle brush, that's what I love them so much, is that they're so versatile. A lot of times you have to spend, you have to change brushes. Let's try a little bit of uh, purple and uh, cad red medium now and make a little bit darker color. Make a little bit of a shadow color under here like that. Okay, down in here like this. Just say the bottom of this. How about down in here too? It could do a little bit of a dark shadow color. Um, this way. Down here like that. So, okay, I'm kind of liking that. And then I might take a little bit of buff with that and come this way. I want to say this is some, some sort of rock here. It's a little bit of purple and cad red medium. Make almost a burnt sienna color. Did you guys know that? Did you know that cad red medium and um, purple and even a little ultramarine blue can almost give you this almost brown color? So we're going to come up here like that and say that there's a rock here. And then I want just some purple and make this a little darker down in here like that. A little purple ultramarine blue. There we go. This is all going to be dark down here. Okay, so we pretty much covered up the whole um, our whole um, little canvas now, right? Yes and yes, we've done that. Okay. Um, I almost feel like there could be a little bit of phthalo blue and. Um, Zinc white. Let me just try that. A little bit of thalo blue. I started ultramarine, but I really want some thalo. Now I'm going to mix that with a little bit of ultramarine. Now let's see if some buff titanium. Let's see what color that gives me. A little bit deeper color. I want a little bit deeper color back here. Just, well, not quite that. I don't quite like that. Let's try some magenta with it. You've got to play with the colors a little bit. I still want it purpley, but I just, I tell you what I wanted was I wanted it just a little bit deeper just on the ridge here this back ridge before I started with the there something like that just wanted you to see that a little bit more contrast right there and then notice I'm not rinsing my brush I'm just taking the brush and doing this uh, acrylics have come such a long way since I started painting acrylics you know I started painting acrylics when I was 17 they just come out there are really no books on them or anything and uh, it was a little more challenging to do it. Let's just change the shape of that so it's not all just going down. See what we did? Just change the shape of that little hill. We kind of broke that up a bit. And I'm going to put a little dark purple right here. Down in here like that, over that line. 
Okay, that just gave me a that just gave me a basis to see where I wanted to um, you know, break this painting up. And now I want this red flower, this red flowering bush in here. That's where I want it, right in here, which is I thought was so pretty. And um, I also want some more, you know, some more of these little um, kind of orange orange pictures flowers here, some little cat red, medium, and yellow. Okay, that's that's pretty for my orange bush. But then if I add a little purple to that, then I'm talking about a small amount, like a drop. Then it sort of see how that tones that down, and I might a little bit of that color. Let's see in here like this. And I might just say that just up above here, we've got some of this purple bush coming up this way too. Like Don't have to talk about it much. Just just throw it up there. See what happens. Is this dry? Let's take a minute and dry everything before we try to put red on top of wet green. Hi, this is Ginger Cook. Now you may have noticed in this video that you're probably just seeing my hands. Maybe I shot this in my studio and we didn't do a live video. And Sometimes we're traveling, sometimes uh, we have extra videos in case someone's just, uh, for whatever reason, can't shoot a live uh, YouTube uh, show. However, if you like the format and you like the really in-depth focus instruction that you're getting here, check out my website, gingercooklive.gallery, because I have over 300 videos like this where it's just me talking to you about how to paint something, whether it's from beginning a beginning artist painting to an advanced artist with videos over four or five hours long. That's what we've got and personal art coaching to help you improve as an artist. So if this is the type of format you like, then you need to be a member of our Art Academy. GingerCookLive.Gallery Alright, so I want a clean brush and something pretty small. I want a clean little brush. Here's our the baby of the family. This is the quarter inch and this is the one I really like for small detail. I'm going to take some cad red medium now and I'm going to just dot in this tree. Almost doing like a half circle shape like this and but with dots, okay? And they're connected. So I'm going to say dot in this like that and uh, come up here and dot it in here. And they're all the little dots are touching each other. And then there's a little space dotting in here. And uh, as we come down into this area, okay, I think I want a little magenta too here. Let's put a little, little of that magenta color underneath here. Just make this a little darker as we come down. It's our fun little fun little orange bush. And this is using, again, you see so much of using the, the angle brush, just using the corners of the angle brush to do this. Just kind of a, and it's funny, this, I'm holding this down like I need to, but you know what? Because I'm so used to painting with those other little canvas sheets, but you do not need to hold it down, okay? This is pretty, pretty happy. All right, let's just get this up here a little bit higher here. Okay, there you go. All right, so that's my my fun little flowering red bush, as opposed to an unfun one. Is there an unfun such a thing as an unfun bush? There we go. Okay, so there, that that's it. There's our little flowering bush. And now the big the big thing, the easy thing, is this um, is this uh, this big tree that we're going to put in here. And um, I just want to make sure that I've got some. Here's a little ultramarine blue and cad red medium. That's going to give me a brown, a really nice brown. And I want to just make sure that to put some buff titanium with it. I want to make sure I have some nice contrasting uh, colors on this rock because I've got this rock here. And um, I may put a rock down here too. We'll see if we end up leaving it, but it could be here. If I had a rock here, well, well, you see it, I have one, but if I'm going to leave the rock there, I need it to be darker. How's that? So maybe I'll just come up here like this and just suggest this rock. We don't know. We'll see. Don't know if I'm leaving that or not. All right, so I'm going to dry this one last time. 
from the red before I put in well no let's do one more thing before I do that all right now these little bushes here that are in here are going to put some little bright yellow ones right in here like that tapping up almost like little buds that are growing out of the bushes a little yellow buds and then I've got some yellow oxide ones that are less bright here let's mix the two colors together yellow oxide and cad yellow medium and maybe so that it's not so dark but not as light as not as bright as these others okay we're going to say that that's these bushes in here like that and then I want these to be less bright down here I think that's pretty good up here it just if there were any, there might be a few up here, like that, okay? Just to suggest something, but, but not say too much about it. How about up here, too? We might say something about some bushes that came up here, but you wouldn't want the real bright yellow up here. You could do a little bit more of the orange color up here, like that, too, to suggest that there was something growing up on the mountain like that all right so oh I know what I want to do you're going what what you can't wait I'm gonna get a clean brush and what I want to do here is take a little bit of this purple maybe with a little blue and give it a, just come like this and sweep this down like that with me and then I'm gonna take some zinc white and I'm gonna streak it yeah kind of a glob of it like that I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna streak this zinc white like that not too far there okay that needs to be stressed and I need a little bit of that color up in here too okay just there we go okay so now so streak that down there when I like that color too a little bit more purple here and honestly this could be I'm looking at this this doesn't have to be that dark. We could lighten this purple up just a hair here. Still have it work. All right, here's a little buff titanium, a little purple. And uh, there we go. So this can be here. It doesn't have to be quite as dark as we had it. So if we, if, there we go. Put a little bit of blue with it. Ah, perfect. Okay, so just sort of change the values on this. Just change the shape and the values. There you go. So now we've really created some interesting depth in this picture. Put a little of this blue-purple color down here. All right, going to dry it, and we'll do one last thing, which is the tree. Well, maybe a couple last things. There's always a few more things, isn't there? Okay. Okay, is that dry? Looks pretty dry to me. All right, this is our small, where's our, where's our tiny angle brush that we had here? This is the quarter inch one. And what I want to do is um, create, now this is where the titanium white comes out. And you could use, now here, here you go, you could use, um, this is golden fluid acrylics and they have as much pigment in them as regular acrylics. It's not the cheap junk you see at painting parties, okay? This is the real deal. Um, so assuming we can get it out here. <gasps> Look at that. Perfect. Like that's enough for years, but all right, let's try that. Here we go. Here it is. If I'll, we'll see if we like it, but we're going to put it on both sides of the brush like that. And I'm going to start here kind of over this way I think a little bit I had it in the middle before but I'm going to start it a little bit over this way and wind it on up like this and then like this and then kind of curve the brush oh yeah that's just great 
All right, that's working pretty well. Now if I add a little purple to this, which I might do, I might make a pile with some purple in it. And a touch of buff titanium in it, so it's not so purple, maybe a bit of yellow. There you go, just so it's toned down just a bit, a little bit. Yellow grays purple. Did you know that yellow's grays purple because it's opposite on the color wheel? So, all right, so we're going to come along here like this, next to this, this tree. Now let's take a little more, let's just kind of get this, let's just get all of this like that. Right? Okay, and now we're going to come this way and come up and down. Now this is the, we're going to redo this. Like that. So we got what we're looking for some really twisted branches, but they come back around like this. They they keep following us around back toward our main tree. Kind of cross over like that. We'll just pull those brushes out like this. This is, I mean this is, I found this to be very relaxing to paint. Um, there's so many um, uh, variables in painting a tree like this so that you could for sure um, change it up a lot and it would still look good. Just keep your branches thinner. The farther they are from the, uh, the main tree, you want to keep the branches um, thinner, okay? And here we go. And very thin. And that's what an angle brush. This is a brand new Ruby Set and Silver angle brush. And I tell people, people say, well, where do you get those? I buy my brushes from um, the brush guys. And the reason I do that is because they not only give all of our viewers a 5% discount if you use my name, regardless of the band, band of brush up there, okay? So they don't care, you know, if you buy one of the Art Sherpa brushes, my daughter Cinnamon's one of her brushes, or just any old brush that they're carrying on their site. If you use my name, you will get a 5% um, discount. All one word though, can't be, no spaces. And they ship around the world. Now that's usually important because it must be very annoying, YouTube is everywhere, to watch all these shows and artists will sit there and say, well, I love this product, but if you don't live, you know, near a Walmart or a Michael's art store in the States, you're not going to get that product. And so that's got to feel a little frustrating. Where the brush guys, they ship internationally. Like, for instance, sometimes, um, you know, some of the other companies like Jerry's will have certainly as good a prices, but... Um, but the brush guys are giving them to you all all year long, not just um, when they feel like running a lost leisure sale. They're going to give them. To, they're going to give you the 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 um, um, giving you those really good prices. Okay, can you kind of see what we're doing here? I want a branch coming off of here like that. I'll bring one over this way. Now, do you did you know you've got to rinse your brush several times when you're painting because the brush is drying in the paint too, okay? So that's important. So just, you know, it's just it just your the paint's drying inside your brush, okay? So you need to be able to rinse that brush out. Okay? That's really important and reshape it. Take it and reshape it. Pinch it, reshape it, and then flatten it out when you're putting your um, uh, uh, you know, when you're, before you put your paint on, reshape the brush. Okay, so now I need something that's coming down here like this, coming back up around.
And I might just start up this way. So I'm just going to reshape this brush up here a little bit. Okay. And uh, they all, all these, uh, this might be all from the same tree, or maybe it isn't. We don't know. Okay, but you can see that I want some of these up higher like this. There we go. And I think I want this one to come down here like this. I want the shape of that change. Now what do you do when you need to sh change the shape of something? Well, you can bring your purple back in here. Just bring your background color back and then then change it, okay? If you feel like you need it to, to change this, you know, maybe have, a, you know, have this go down a little bit more like this before you crossed over like that. Um, if, if you have to dry it first, because you want, there's what made this sort of perp pretty was all the purple that was on it. And, um, and then you've got your little light accent brushes, uh, accent, accent uh, uh, little branches like that, kind of crossing over. And it doesn't have to be that complicated. I think when it, people look at something like this and go, oh my gosh, this is going to just be ours. But it, th I love the flow paint. This took me a lot longer the first time. Okay, absolutely love the flow paint. So we're going to just sit there and um, I'm going to stop here, but I want a little bit of purple on the base at the bottom of this one like that. There we go. And of course you can always glaze these back if you get too many or you got, you know, you can erase a few or you can glaze some back. But I think that's a really nice shape of my tree and I'm very happy with them with some of this, uh, the way it's working right there. Um, kind of up, kind of an arc here. Lots of little ones over here. Maybe something coming this way. And then up and around there, okay? So what I want to do now is just dry this, all right? So um, now if you're drying a flow paint, you have to be careful because it's more runny. You don't want to get that hair dryer so close that it runs the paint. Ooh, you're thinking it could do that? It might. If it did, it would be very annoying, wouldn't it? So let's let's uh, let's dry this. Um, see, there's my white here like that. Before I get too far with the wool, there you go. All right, there we are. I'm going to dry it. All right. Now rinse the brush. And now we're going to put some um, some grass. So I'm going to take um, some uh, uh, thalo green and, or rather thalo blue, and this um, buff titanium and a little bit of yellow oxide. And I'm going to make this sort of kind of blue green grass. That's pretty, but I'm not sure I want that color. I want it a little bit more. Put a little bit more, put a little magenta in it. I want more of a, an olive green grass. Okay, so I'm going to try a little bit more yellow over here. A little more thalo just to brighten this up just a hair. There we go. Something like that. So here's some different kind of, more of an olive green. Then I, let's try a little ultramarine blue. And um, you get an automatic olive green when you do ultramarine blue, red shade, and um, uh, yellow. So, uh, there you go. So we've got a couple greens here. Now I want to come up here like this, and just because I dried it now, okay, and I want to come over the, actually bring some uh, grass over some of this, like that, and start at the base at the bottom. Now let's go into our lighter colors. Okay, here we go.
And I'll take a little bit of this uh, white and add to that because I want this a little bit lighter. Make sure your brush is nice and flat. And I'll tell you what, these angle brushes are the, are the bomb. I love them. I, I use probably more, angle, particularly for small paintings, I probably use more angle brushes than most people would. And I'll, the, if you're doing a lot of detail work, here's a little bit of just almost yellow oxide in here too. If you're doing a lot of detail work, um, this, the, the flow paints are very nice because here's a little bit of the grass coming up here from the bottom like this and um, over these branches like that. Okay, and just say what's growing on the hillside. Now I want something a little oranger. So I'm take a little cad red medium and yellow. And I want some um, grass that's growing up on top of this rock. I didn't want to talk too much about this rock, but we're going to just say that there's some grasses growing this way. Maybe some of these lighter green ones here. Okay, now the paint's starting to dry in my brush, so I'm going to just dry it out. And, um, okay, with me. I, I think a painting like this can be really fun to do, and it just, I guess the reason I wanted to pick it was I think people might look at something that has a lot of fine lines in it and say, oh, I never can, my brush won't do that. I don't know how to do that, or I'm, I, it never works when I do that, okay? And the reason potentially it doesn't work, okay, is because, um, here's a little bit of cad red medium here coming down here like that with some more red grasses at the bottom. is that um, the reason it often doesn't work is because you've got, um, you, ha you don't have a brush that'll do it. You either are using the wrong paint or you don't have a brush that'll do it. So let's get some little buff titanium out there. Boy, we put, sure put too much of that stuff out. I can do four paintings with the mouth that's on there. Here's a few little lighter colors coming this way up here. Same thing here, one a little bit lighter ones there. So those are, and let's see, we've got a little magenta here with just an, an cad red medium. Let's get a couple little bits of red in here too. There we go, a little bit more. Now, here's the trick. We're going to come back here with a few dots of cad red medium and just in a couple places give the second coat to this tree. Uh, red is one of those colors that can use a second coat. It'll just look brighter if you do that, all right? And um, I want a little just bit of red down in here too, maybe a kind of a peachy red color with the something down here like that and just come in here and just pop that up. So what do we what do we have now? Well, we've got let's make a really light green color and lighten up something right here. Right like that. I'm looking at my other picture and just there we go. Just something like that. Okay, now I'm going to dry the whole thing. I would say we're about done. I'm going to go ahead and dry the entire thing. And I want to see what would happen if I want to show you what would happen if we glaze back this section right here, but we have to dry it first, all right? So let's do that. Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and I'd like to invite you to learn about personal art coaching. This is where members of our academy can send me their artwork and get, it's like having an artist in, you know, sitting in your studio right over your shoulder telling you how you can improve your painting. How cool is that? So if you want to know more about it, check out our website at gingercooklive.gallery. See where personal art coaching can be a benefit for you and help you improve yourself as an artist and really expand your painting skills in acrylic painting. Thanks. Okay. Now you can use a glazing medium, but I think for this small amount, I might be tempted to just use water, clean, clean brush, really clean brush, and just a little bit of water. And um, just go over on this part, I don't know that I need to have these branches be this um, bright. I'm going to direct the focus up here by um, 
kind of glazing these back a bit, okay? The same thing here, maybe just glaze this trunk back a bit, right like that. This is a really nice trick to do. Just, just a little bit of color on these, like that. Now what you do then is you can come back, once you've done it, you can come back and add a few little, just lighter highlights to bring the eye around, see? You've done that, then you can come back and just pop a few little bright ones in and you're good to go. There we go. Just bring it around like that. So it's kind of an old gnarled tree. And we've got our grass growing here. Here's a little more of the gold coming out of the bottom. Here too. Just. And we're done. And I have to say I quite like this board. I like it a lot. Um, I think it's a very nice thing to paint. I think it's a good idea. And if, you, if you're selling your artwork, you generally want to uh, paint on you know, something that resembles canvas. When you paint on the canvas boards, it's just, uh, you know, that they're just cardboard on the back. It's, um, I think it gives, you know, for me personally, I think it gives your painting more value when you, um, uh, when you paint on, um, on, on something a little more substantial. And I have to say, I do like these, though. I recommend sanding them for detail. Here they are the protones from Jerry's. And they're not paying me to say this creative mark, but I'm, we're always looking for new stuff for you, for you guys. I'm always looking for the best stuff. Um, hopefully we'll, you know, Fredericks will, uh, we'll get some more canvas from Fredericks and do more with them. But um, everybody's got different uh, needs that they have to have to, um, uh, you know, for, you know, whether you're doing something small practice, whether you're doing a giant canvas, whatever. You need, you'll have different stuff you want to do. So I'm saying, yeah, do that. Now, is this dry? These Posca pens are perfect for signing your name. It's good to have them. And also, if you needed like a few little tiny brush strokes like that, you're having trouble with the tiniest, I don't know what kind of a sock folder you are, detail person, but you can use that to come out and do a few little tiny wisps of... Um, you know, little branches if you wanted to, right? You can you can absolutely do that. And th these that's what these little pens excel at. You see something you want to put, you don't quite, even with the best brush, you're, you're having a little trouble. This, this works like great. Just don't overdo it. So I hope you enjoyed painting this. Please subscribe to our channel. Um, I think for 6x8, this is charming. Here's the one I did with... Um, with a brush just on this canvas and, and not using the fluid paint just using regular um, Matisse titanium white and though I have to say I got it a little bit further along using the um, let me just put it like this using the um, the fluid paint I do like that for details and I like the fact we have a little more atmospheric perspective here a little more detail I put on these um, trees back here so there you go uh, I haven't quite got a title for it, but uh, I'm sure by the time you see it, there'll be one on the channel. So thanks, you guys, and have a wonderful day.